Let's say you have $5 and your friend offers to flip a fair coin and give you another dollar if it lands on heads, or take one away if it lands on tails. If you reach $10 before hitting zero, then you win and get to keep everything. But if you ever hit zero, then you lose the game and your $5. It might be obvious that the chance of winning is 50% with a fair coin, but we could also imagine changing the starting amount, goal value, and bias of the coin. And then the solution isn't as clear. With proper techniques, however, all of these cases are equally easy to solve. The solution reveals that with a fair coin, the chance of winning changes linearly with the starting value. If the coin is biased against us with a one-third chance or less of landing on heads, then we'd expect to lose, even starting just one dollar shy of the goal. With a coin more than two-thirds biased in our favor, we'd expect to win even starting with just one dollar. The point is we can predict the outcome for any combination of these variables by studying the game as a Markov process. We could even make the game more complicated by allowing a choice of bet size on each flip that differs from one dollar. That would make the problem a Markov decision process, or MDP but we'll stick with the original game, which is a Markov reward process, and focus on the Markov part for now. A Markov process has states, which we'll represent with these open circles, and transitions, which will appear as arrows. Transitions move the process from one state to another. Any starting state could have many, but let's imagine there are only three. What makes the process Markov is that what happens in a transition is entirely predictable from the starting state. More precisely, there is some function we'll call p, which tells you the chance of any transition occurring. If we fix the starting state, then its sum over all transitions is 1. Let's imagine this first transition occurs. From here, the same function tells us the probabilities for the next one, starting at s prime. In fact, we can ignore how we got to this state, since it isn't relevant to what happens next. Some processes also contain terminal states, which I'll distinguish with a square instead of a circle. One can't leave a terminal state, since the probability of remaining in it is 1. We can imagine a sequence of states visited by a process, which will end if a terminal one is encountered. However, each transition only depends on the two states involved. This is all a little abstract, so let's use the coin flip game to draw diagrams for a concrete example. The states are just dollar values, and the transitions move them up or down by one. We can connect the states with arrows, noting the probabilities for a bias coin. This problem has two terminal states, one at 10 and the other at zero. This entire diagram is equivalent to the transition function I mentioned earlier. If we look at a particular set of states, we can also draw the branching diagram with two transitions for going up or down in value. The terminal states, of course, only have one. In the next video, I'll explain how the reward fits into all this, and eventually get to the techniques used in finding the solution I showed earlier. If you want to learn more before that, my GitHub has interactive notes, and this playlist discusses them.